Julia, is the name given to the unknown source of a sound recorded on March 1, 1999. It was recorded on the eastern equatorial Pacific using an autonomous hydrophone array. Heard for many thousands of kilometers, the source of the sound has been largely dismissed as an iceberg running aground somewhere off of Antarctica, its point of origin being somewhere between Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. What gave this story a rather chilling twist, however, is a classified image which later surfaced, a classified image later redacted, taken by a NASA satellite, which shows something with an enormous shadow within the waters of Cape Adair at the time which, if confirmed as a living animal, would be classified as a sea monster of gigantic proportions. The USA's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, have captured and subsequently released a number of mysterious sounds of possible underwater monsters over the past few years. The upsweep is an unidentified sound detected on the American NOAA's Equatorial Autonomous Hydrophone Arrays. This sound was present when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory began recording its sound surveillance system, SOSIS, in August 1991. It consists of a long train of narrow-band upsweeping sounds of several seconds in duration each. The source level was high enough to be recorded throughout the Pacific. The sound appears to be seasonal, generally reaching peaks in spring and autumn, but it is unclear why. The source can be roughly located at 54 degrees south, 140 degrees west, which is near the location of volcanic activity, but the location of the sound remains a mystery. The whistle recorded in the Mariana Volcanic Arc of the Pacific Ocean, but since it was only recorded on one hydrophone rather than the three required to triangulate a location, it is considered unidentified. Bloop is the name given to an ultra-low frequency and extremely powerful underwater sound, detected by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in 1997. The sound's source was roughly triangulated to a remote point in the South Pacific Ocean, west of the southern tip of South America, and the sound was detected several times. According to the NOAA description, it rises infrequently rapidly over a duration of one minute and was of sufficient amplitude to be heard on multiple sensors at a range of over 5,000 kilometers. Dr. Christopher Fox does not believe its origin to be man-made, such as a submarine or bomb, nor is it familiar to geological events, such as volcanoes or earthquakes. The audio profile of Bloop does indeed resemble that of a living creature, yet the source is a mystery, both because it is different from any known sounds and because it was several times louder than the loudest ever recorded animal, the blue whale. Slow down is a name given to another mysterious deep sea sound, recorded on May 19, 1997, in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. The name was chosen because the sound slowly decreases in frequency over a duration of seven minutes. It was recorded using an autonomous hydrophone array. The sound has been picked up several times each year since 1997. And finally, the train is the name given to a sound recorded on March 5, 1997, on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. 
the sound rises to a quasi-steady frequency. What is especially interesting about this sound is its origins, which are also within Cape Adair, the same general location as Julia. Could some of these sounds be the mating calls of unknown sea monsters? Maybe one day we will find out. Damn midget's car. Oh. There is a dark and mysterious loch buried deep within the highlands of Scotland. A lake of gigantic proportions, with depths as black as night, many say this vast cold and mysterious body of water, protects a living beast. A monster of Jurassic proportions, the lake is known as Loch Ness, it is a long, narrow lake, southwest of Inverness. It is the second largest loch in Scotland by surface area and the largest by volume of water, Loch Ness actually holds more water than all of the other lakes in Great Britain combined. Because of its depth, most of the water stays at a steady temperature of about 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Only the top 100 feet or so varies in temperature, it will never freeze. Our world lay within this lock, out of reach but never changing, landlocked but once connected to the vast oceans of Earth, an astounding 755 feet at its known deepest point. The water is so dark due to high levels of peat in surrounding soils, the breadth, depth, low visibility, and constant temperature make it a prime environment for an elusive monster, standing on the shore, the deep colors of the water conjures feelings of the abyss, it appears bottomless. Rumors of a monster on the loch stretch back many years, sightings and a belief in the serpent's existence has even led to a scientific name being given to Nissi, in 1975. Nessiter or Shrumbopteryx, or the Ness monster with the diamond-shaped fin. The first apparent recorded sighting of the monster was in 565 AD by Saint Columba. Saint Columba was an Irish missionary praised for spreading Christianity in Scotland. On one trip to the Highlands, he ran across a group of people burying a man who had been bitten by the monster in the River Ness. The saint supposedly asked another man present to swim across the river. When the man jumped in, the monster arose from the depths and Saint Columba, invoking God's power, banished it. It must be noted, the story was written nearly a century after the supposed encounter. The next official recorded sighting wouldn't happen until over 1300 years later in 1933. George Spicer was out driving with his wife when they saw a large creature, it walked in front of their car near the lock, the creature supposedly had a huge body, long neck, and they couldn't see any limbs before it lunged towards the lake. A few weeks later, a motorcyclist claimed to have nearly run into a similar creature, describing it as a type of plesiosaur, a prehistoric marine creature with four large fins and a long neck, fitting the Spicer's description. Soon, with the building of a road along the Loch's coast, many more reports of sightings of the monster flooded in. In this same year, the first picture would supposedly be taken of the monster, in November, by Hugh Gray. He supposedly saw a large creature rise above the surface of the water and snapped several photographs before it disappeared, but only one photo turned out when developed. The picture supposedly shows a creature with a long neck and a thick body, with four humps at its side which might have been flippers. However, it also strongly resembles a blurry photo of a dog, swimming with a stick in its mouth. Also in 1933, a man named Marmaduke Wetherill, a well-known big game hunter, was hired by the Daily Mail to find evidence of the Loch Ness Monster. He later found large tracks on the edge of the lake and made molds, but the Natural History Museum examined them, and said they were more than likely just a dried hippo's foot from an umbrella stand. Wetherill was fired for failing to find any substantial evidence. 
On April 21, 1934, the most famous picture of the monster was published in the Daily Mail. The picture was supposedly taken by a doctor named Robert Kenneth Wilson, but he didn't like having his name associated with the photo so it became known as the Surgeon's Photograph. The picture shows, from a distance, the long neck and head of the monster rising from rippling water. It turns out, the photo was a hoax. In 1994, Christopher Sperling, the stepson of Marmaduke Wetherill, the guy with the umbrella stand, admitted to being involved in creating a model of Nissy's neck and head and placing it on a toy submarine. Wetherill was said to have come up with the hoax because he was humiliated by his previous attempts at finding the monster. Archives also shed some light on how seriously locals took the monster. William Fraser, the chief constable of Inverness Shire in the 1930s, wrote a letter to a government official noting that a man from London, Peter Kent, stated that he was having a special harpoon gun made and that he was to return to Loch Ness with some 20 experienced men on August the 22nd for the purpose of hunting the monster down. Fraser added that he warned Kent not to hunt for the creature, and suggested that some official government protection might be established. Since then, countless videos, photos, and eyewitness accounts have emerged claiming to prove the existence of the Loch Ness Monster. In 1954, the first contact via sonar was made on Rival 3, a fishing boat. 480 feet below the boat, a large object was seen keeping pace with the boat's speed. In 2011, sonar contact was made again by Marcus Atkinson who saw an object about 5 feet long and 75 feet below the surface. It kept pace with his boat for 2 minutes before it disappeared. The sonar image has been examined and critics have dismissed it as an algae bloom. It could have also been a large sturgeon. This photograph was taken by George Edwards in 2011, Edwards claims that it is the most convincing photograph yet, but, in this case, even other Loch Ness monster researchers have questioned the authenticity of the picture, claiming the hump rising from the water in the picture is actually a fiberglass model that was used in the filming of a documentary by National Geographic, which Edwards had participated in. Loch Ness has been repeatedly searched, using everything from miniature submarines to divers. In 2003, a team of researchers sponsored by the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC, undertook the largest and most comprehensive search of Loch Ness ever conducted. They scoured the lake using 600 separate sonar beams and satellite navigation. One of the lead searchers, Ian Florence, was quoted in a BBC News release, We went from shoreline to shoreline, top to bottom on this one, we have covered everything in this loch, and we saw no signs of any large animal living in the loch. Maybe, in the past, there was indeed, an unexplainable creature within the loch, one matching the early reports, maybe like so many unexplainable things, it was shipped away to a research laboratory, only to end up stuffed in some eccentric billionaire's curiosities, never again seeing the light of day, or healthy research or debate. Unfortunately, to this day there has been no official evidence of Nissi's existence found, no bodies or even parts of bodies have been found on the lake bottom or washed ashore. Though the story of Nissi has been contaminated by hoaxing, many sightings are likely honest mistakes and misidentified encounters. On the other hand, maybe some, just a rare few, have been lucky enough to have captured a glimpse of one of the world's most elusive cryptids. For every lifelong local who swears he's seen the creature, another dozen insist they've never seen anything unexplainable on the loch. For those who can't make it to Scotland to search for the mythical beast, you can now hop online. The Loch Ness is now on Google Street View, meaning you can explore just about every inch of Nissy's home, which extends about 23 miles 37 kilometers, while sitting behind the computer. Such digital adventurers can search above and below the surface of the lake, connected to the River Owich to the south and the Bananarrows to the north. I will leave a link in the description, happy hunting. Oh, and if you do manage to catch a glimpse of her, be sure to let us know. As always, thanks for watching.